going to face. At the gas station they have, you know, please keep fire and get away because it's flammable. Like, Allah has created me flammable. Please drop through sparks. He said, لا حاجة لي إلى الخدمة. I don't have a need for anyone to serve me. And then he said, sister, please take the money and leave. She took the money and she walked out. We might tell her, sister, I think you get lost. Can I show you the place? You know, normally even the navigation uses signal here. The navigation generally doesn't pick up signal. Perhaps can I just walk, walk you back? Luqman Hakim said, oh my son, if desperation calls you to walk behind a lion, do so. But don't ever walk behind a woman. Luqman Hakim said, Oh my son, if desperation calls you to walk behind a lion, إِنْشِ وَرَاءَ الْأَسَدِ وَلَا تَمْشِ وَرَاءَ الْمَرْأَةِ If desperation calls you to walk behind a lion, so be it. Heaven knows what circumstances could face you at which jungle on which time. But don't walk behind a woman. When she left, he said, خَرَجْتُ مِنْ سِجِسْتَانِ بِنِيَّةِ طَلَبِ الْعِلْمِ when I left my town and my city, I told everybody I'm going in the pursuit of knowledge and I don't want to dilute my endeavor even with the lawful. I said I'm going to learn knowledge. That's why I say, my brother, you're saying you're going for Hajj? Are you truly going for Hajj? I'm going to spend 10 days in Makkah. Are you truly going to spend 10 days in Makkah? Remember spirituality coming in from one side and at the same time you have a hole of your eyes. It's dripping, it's leaking out. You have the whole of your ears, it's coming out. You have the whole of your tongue, you, 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 you blurt in things. So whatever you fill in in the form of worship and fast, there is a leak, there is a leak. So nothing has been retained. Simple example, we can have the most brilliant of ACs on, but the window is on, or the window is open, the door is open. The desired object, the desired result is not achieved. You've got to block the avenues of outside influence. And then you blow your coal and cool air. And then the atmosphere becomes cool and chilled. But if you have the AC blowing at its highest and optimum, and the doors and the windows are open, it's going to feel like there's no AC on. You could be exerting your nights and your days, and you could be doing the rest of it. But if these holes are open, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, that AC is not going to have the desired effect. And then in the end, Shaykh Abdul Fattah, after writing, he speaks about many, I just said two, three, he writes a beautiful prayer. فَجَزَاهُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْعِيمِ وَالدِّينِ وَالْإِسْلَامِ خَيْرَ الْجَزَاءِ وَأَكْرِمْهُمْ فِي جُوَارِهِ بِالْحُورِ الْعِيمِ مَعَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالسِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ May Allah reward these scholars on behalf of the knowledge of Islam, on behalf of Islam, on behalf of the ulama, on behalf of the Muslim ummah in its entirety, with the loftiest of abodes in Jannah. And may He reward them, for verily they are deserving, and most deserving, for the pure damsels of paradise. Who better for the woman that the Quran says, وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابَ Developed in their chest, قَاسِرَةُ الطَّرْفِ Modest in their gaze, لُؤْلُؤُ مَكْنُونَ Hidden pearls. لَمْ يَتْمِسُهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانْ No human has looked at them, leave alone, touch them. بِأَيِّ بَنَانٍ تُعَاتِيهَا تَرْغِيب Do you know with which hand she will embrace you? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the Hawa, he said, tell us. He said, لَوْ أَنَّ بَنَانًا مِّن بَنَانِهَا بَدَى لَوْ أَنَّ بَنَانًا مِّن بَنَانِهَا بَدَى Let her finger be exposed and it will outshine the brilliance of the sun. وَيُدْخِلُهُمُ الْجَنَّةَ عَرَّفَهَا لَهُمْ You and I, you know, Shaykh, tell us more, tell us more. Oh, that's great. My brother, my brother, let's be real with life. Let's be real. Grab a bull by its horns, as they say. Tackle the hard issues. When things get tough, the tough get going. Things that become tough, the tough have to get going. What is get going? We have to turn to Allah. Coming back to the incident of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam without losing focus. We said he was a young man. We said he was not married. And then we just digress and, and spoke on this here. <coughs> the third challenge, kana fi surat al-mamluk. His present profile was that of a slave. He was not a slave, but people had wrongly imposed the slavery on him. And as a slave, you didn't have to preserve your profile as much as a liberated person had to do. So somehow, he had an easier way to slip out into sin. 
which made him more susceptible to the crime, more susceptible to the crime, more prone to the wrong. And then number four, he was in a foreign place. And when a person is foreign, automatically he becomes somehow relaxes the guard. At home people are watching, you know, that auntie across the road, that uncle, this one, that one. But when you're at London Heathrow and you walk in at the airport, you're relaxing and you're chilling and you walk in and suddenly it's all like, oh, alaikum salam. And where did this salam come from? And, no, I was just browsing here, I thought I'd buy some newspaper. Oh, okay, newspaper, I thought you were looking somewhere else. You're off guard. But Allah is watching you, my brother. Allah is watching إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ وَأَسِرُوا قَوْلَكُمْ يَوِ جَهَرُوا بِهِ إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ الْلَّتِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ The one who created you, won't he know you best? Won't he see you all the times? Is not his eye upon you? Is not his gaze upon you? His watchful eye is there. You cannot veil him, you cannot conceal him, you cannot block him. So Yusuf al was in a foreign place. Somehow the guard is a bit relaxed and compromised. Again, that makes him closer to the vice. That makes the challenge that much more daunting. That makes the seduction that much more difficult. Then, وَكَانَتِ الْمَرْأَةُ ذَاتُ مَنْصَبٍ وَجَمَالٍ The woman who seduced him was not an ordinary woman, was not an ordinary simple. It was a woman minister's wife of prominence, of beauty, of status, of recognition. وَالدَّاعِي مَعَ ذَلِكَ أَقْوَى مِنْ دَاعٍ مَنْ لَيْسَ كَذَلِكَ and obviously, and obviously, the challenge that comes from that dimension is far greater. Then, وَكَانَتْ هِيَ الْمُطَالِبَةُ فَيَزُولُ بِذَلِكَ كُلْفَةُ تَعَرُّذِ الرَّجُلُ She initiated it. So when she initiated it, he didn't have to fear rejection. How many a man would not initiate their fantasy out of the fear of rejection? They will harbor their fantasy, but fear that I might be rejected, so embarrassment of rejection keeps him back and not the fear of Allah. And hence for that man there's no reward. He won't have the punishment of the wrong. He won't have the punishment because he didn't do the wrong. But he's not restraining out of the fear of Allah. He's better than the one who indulges. But the ideal is the one who withholds for the pleasure of Allah. The one, the ideal is, you know, the one who, you tell your son, I don't want you to go with that friend. And then you come home, MashaAllah, my son, I'm so happy to see you. You decided not to go. No, no, you still didn't come, I'm waiting for you. Oh no. In the end, the friend didn't come and he didn't go. Are you going to give him the equal pat? Are you going to acknowledge him equally? No. He said, I'm happy he didn't go, he won't get the negative influence of that peer pressure. But I'm not over there excited. Because you haven't respected or recognized my sentiments. It's not me who you have honored. Circumstances have kept you back. So Yusuf didn't have the fear to break the ice and approach the woman. She initiated the whole thing. No fear of rejection. Furthermore, was that مع الطلب الرغبة التامة والمراودة التي يزول بها ظل الاختبار She had come across in an assertive way. So it was clear she wasn't setting a trap. Because today you don't know, you know, there's so many organizations, they set a trap for you. To test the waters, how loyal you are. I mean, what a world are we living in? What a world are we living in, oh my Allah? What more are we going to hear of, my Allah? One side people are, ex I was reading an article, person in certain remote parts, selling body parts, physical humans are selling their body parts to put a plateau of food on their table. And then other people are exploiting and abusing and they as you know amassing more and more. And just look at the imbalances and the gross discrepancies between the poor and the wealthy, between the ruling class and the subjects. Ya Allah, what a discrepancy. Only Qiyamat is going to explain this whole thing. One brother said to me, I said, No, that's the wrong way of saying it, but anyway. He says, You know, Sheikh, sometimes I wish like I just want to sit on Qiyamat and on this big screen, I want to have some popcorn and some coffee and watch this whole thing what happened in the world. 
you know, who killed who, and who's done who, and who was the victim, and who was the victor, and was the mother-in-law right, and the daughter-in-law was right, and was the employer correct, and I said, you know, I want to watch this on this, on this big screen, and I said, my brother, there will be issues for you to answer. You draw Bibi Adam a Yom al Qiyamatika and Lahu Badaj. Bukhari, my Habib Sasun said, You'll appear as a lamb before your Allah. You'll be trembling yourself. You're not going to be all structured and massacred and strong and, 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 and bold and loud. You'll be a lamb. You won't even be a sheep. You'll be a baby lamb that will be coming in. That is your position before your Allah. And furthermore, what else did this woman do? Was that that ma'adhalika taghliq al abwaab? In addition to all this, she shut the doors. وَكَانَتْ فِي مَحَلِّ سُلْطَانِهَا بِحَيْثُ تَعْرِفَ الْمَكَانِ الَّذِي لَا تَنَاهُلُهُ الْعُيُونَ She was in a familiar environment, in her own environment. Sometimes in a foreign place, you don't know the place, she doesn't know the place, the curtain moves, someone blows the horn, the alarm bell rings, immediately the panic. She was in her familiar environment, so she knew the nooks and the corners. So she was at ease and calm, and she tried to bring that level of calmness onto Yusuf and seduce him, as the Quran said, وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبَوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكْ وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبَوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكْ She shut the doors, and I painted the picture, and Yusuf is young, and he's single, and he's foreign, and he's a stranger, and she's prominent, and she's beautiful, and she's assertive, and the doors are shut, and the man is young, and the woman is beautiful, and she said, come on Yusuf, let us indulge. Let's close our eyes for a moment and think, think, Ya my Allah, Ya my Allah, we don't even ask for that situation to get that reward because we know we won't able to live up to it, Allah. We don't, we're asking you, my Allah, just let us not face those challenges, Allah. We are too weak to even imagine the thought what would happen to us. وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكَ قَالَ مَعَادَ اللَّهِ قال معاذ الله إنه ربي أحسن مثواي. He said, Allah forbid, I will never entertain the thought. My Allah has been too kind to me to even imagine disobeying Him. My Allah has been too kind. I'm asking you, what are you short of? That is why one scholar said, you have a peaceful night. You wear an exclusive dress, you live a good home, a wonderful lifestyle, and what's your gratitude? You must your Fajr Salah. That's how you start off your gratitude to Allah. You start off your gratitude by omitting your Fajr prayer. But he restrained himself, and I told you what Allah gave him, the empire, the dominion of Egypt. I want to mention with you a few incidents, inshallah, and then we try and draw it to a close. It is the reign of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. He dispatches the Sahaba in a direction. Amongst them was Abdullah ibn Huzafa radiallahu anhu. They were apprehended and intercepted. The king of that time was told that in the group there is a young man, Abdullah ibn Huzafa, who belongs to the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Huzafa radiallahu anhu was summoned and he was brought forward. When he comes forward, the king says to him, I have an option and a proposal to make to you. He said, go for it. He said, أَعْرِضُ عَلَيْكَ أَمْرًا you forsake your faith, embrace my creed, and immediately you are half in my empire. Immediately. People give us false hopes and we bow to it. People give us false hopes and we bow to it. We lose the money and we lose our Allah more importantly. I told you my brother, the most exorbitant thing in life is sin. Because why? It costs you, not your health, not your wealth, not your wife, it costs you your Allah. It costs you your Allah. Remember that. Person said, oh, but I'm only paying one dollar interest. I said, it's not the number, it's not the amount. It means you and Allah are at war. It's this antagonistic relation you've entered into with your Creator that is the painful thing, not the connotations of a dollar. It's not one dollar or two dollars, you are at war with your Creator. How can you sleep with peace? How can you toss by night? How can you eat his food? How can you breathe his air? So, Abdullah ibn Huzafa said, talk about the possible, don't talk about the impossible. لَوْ أَعْطَيْتَنِي جَمِيعَ مَا تَمْلِكَ وَجَمِيعَ مَا مَلَكَتْهُ الْعَرَبِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ أَرْجِعَ عَنْ دِينِ مُحَمَّدٍ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ مَا فَعَلْتُ Ask me to entertain the thought of forsaking my faith, 
for the duration of the wink of an eye and offer me the luxuries the entire world has.